Hi everyone, Teddy here. And I'm Courtney, and today we're gonna be looking at 10 fragrances for gentlemen. So if you wanna smell classy, if you wanna smell like the best date there is, these are the fragrances for you. So 10, Teddy has five, I have five, you go first. Yes, we're looking at grown man energy today. Yes. Start us off with Versace Pour Homme Oud Noir. So this is a fragrance, and I'm trying to sp switch it up because we want to go some niche fragrances. We also want to go for some designer fragrances, and I think this is probably the most elevated and sophisticated Versace that you can go for. There certainly are Versace fragrances that are going to, I, I think, project some mature, you know, well put together individual. But this one, I think, is the most elevated. Uh, this one has a note of oud. It's going to be uh, more synthetic creation rather than like raw natural materials extraction. There, uh, black pepper, patchouli, saffron, cardamom. And uh, for a fragrance that is going to be in this price range to get this scent profile, I think it's pretty unique. I also think that it's very wearable for a fragrance that's going to be presented with this uh, oud backbone. I like it, it smells good, it smells fresh, also has the Versace touch to it. I think it can be worn by a variety of different individuals and just comes off classy and elevated compared to the typical Versace fragrances that you might smell. Can I smell it? Yes. Mmm. That's a classy man right there. It is. That's a gentleman. Very nice. It does have almost this kind of peppery type of nature to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit sweet, but uh, it's also very masculine and it spicy. It is. Pleasant, mm -hmm. nice, worth giving a shot. I actually have seen people hype this one up a little bit. It seems like it's moving out of the collection from Versace, which is a bit of a bummer, but uh, this one, I think it's a cool one to pick up. Next up, Courtney. Next is Class in a Bottle, and that is Terre d'Hermes. Orange, vetiver, pepper, grapefruit, cedar, patchouli, all the good things. It's woody, dusty, has a prominent orange on the top. Yes. It's linear, but it's still good. It's this orange, citrus, a bit more mature, but not too mature to where, you know, a, a variety of people couldn't wear it. This is a classic fragrance. It's simple. But I think this goes to show what a simple designer fragrance, when it can be done well, mm -hmm. and it's centralized on a focused area. It does have some youthfulness to it still, even though it is, I would say, mature in some areas. It's classy. It's just a classy fragrance. I mean, Hermes, you hear Hermes and you just think of a gentleman, you think of classy, you think of sophisticated, has it going on, has their life together, um, which are all the good things. And the other thing I like about this, it puts vetiver in a lane where it could be more wearable than sometimes it typically is. Yeah. Sometimes people struggle with pulling that off, but it works wonderfully here. I normally don't like vetiver all that much, but this one I just adore. So that just goes to show. So next here we have Dior Eau Sauvage. This is the EDT version. If you look at classic fragrances from the 20th century that I think everybody needs to smell at least once, this is has to be on the list. Okay. First released in 1966, this one is defined by its bright uh, citrus opening and then turning into classic masculine and it's dried down. Uh, notes here, lemon, bergamot, basil, oak moss, vetiver, rosemary, and jasmine. Some will say this is very light and airy, which it is, but it does still have some staying power. I forgot their claws into this one in terms of some uh, reformulation, but still I think uh, it, it wears well. I think it's one of those fragrances that is timeless. Oh, yeah. It sure does maybe show its age in some areas, but uh, still could be worn. I've, I've gone on trips with this one, just put it in my in my bag and uh, just was off. I mean, this is also a good one to have, I think, in a 50 ml, just because it's so versatile. No one's gonna be offended by it. And it just epitomizes class in many ways. Next up, Courtney. Next up, we have Floris number 89. Classic British perfumery here. Floris is just a great house to check out if you haven't already. Notes for this one, we have lavender, rose, bergamot, orange, geranium, and neroli. And number 89 refers to 89 German Street where the company has had their uh, main headquarters for centuries, honestly, which is pretty impressive for a fragrance house. One of the most storied houses in all of perfumery. Uh, when the likes of Winston Churchill, Oscar Wilde will come to your establishment to get a fragrance, I think it speaks highly of what you're projecting out. I would yes. say this one is extremely mature, especially yes. compared to all of the other ones. I know when you think gentleman, classy, Mature is a word that also comes to mind. This one does, you know, it, it's more mature than the rest. It skews older is probably the best way to say it. Yeah. And 
I would say probably of any of the fragrances on the list here today, that's gonna be the case the most. Mm -hmm. But if you're somebody that likes classic perfumery, I, I'm somebody that even if I don't wear it as often, I like to see where the classics come from. I like to see what were the trailblazers of different genres, mm -hmm. maybe defining different uh, locations around the planet and how they go about mastering this art. I think you need to have that context in order to appreciate this one fully. So next on the list here, we have one of my personal favorites, and this is from Creed. This is Green Irish Tweed. I love this fragrance. It's timeless, it's classic. It's, uh, it's a fragrance that whenever I put this on, I just feel like a million bucks. Boss I, I, mode. I really do. I mean, like when you get to put on a suit that just fits you, and you know, it's, you're able to get it tailored, and you just know how that feels, and you just like, you feel your shoulder blades going back, and you're just ready to go at the day. That's kind of what I feel like when I have this. I just feel well put together. I feel like it's a, just a little pick me up and I just enjoy it. Some of the defining notes here, lemon verbena, iris, violet leaf, sandalwood, and ambergris. I know that this one is a little bit more pricey, mm -hmm. but I truly think that this is worth every penny. It smells so good. I love when you wear this one. Again, you're right. It's almost the little black dress equivalent for women. When you put it on, you just feel, again, like you said, a million bucks. Mm -hmm confidence in a bottle. And also, it's very rare for a fragrance to, you know, now you're looking at 40 years, this fragrance mm -hmm. is almost that old, and it still smells fresh, uh, although maybe leaning slightly mature, yeah. still incredibly wearable even in 2022. Next up, Guerlain Homme EDP. Another classic, smells great. Notes for this one, lime, mint, rum, vetiver, cedar, and patchouli. It's refreshing yet mature. A great summer fragrance. It's a little bit boozy undertones with a nice woody base, kind of mojito vibes a little mm -hmm. bit. Guerlain is just, oh yeah. I mean, they epitomize this idea of just class. Mm -hmm perhaps the most storied house in perfumery maybe of all time. Mm -hmm. And this one, what I like about it is you mentioned that boozy uh, just type of nature to it, but when you combine that with some fresh elements with like lime and mint, it's a very cool dichotomy of those two ideas bring, being brought together. Mm -hmm. I just love this fragrance. Great for the summertime performance, also pretty solid. Mm -hmm. uh, and Guerlain, sometimes their fragrances are so classy that it's hard to wear them. This is not that. This is an easy fragrance to wear. You could wear this with a t-shirt and still project out this level of class and sophistication. And it's pretty affordable too, so. Yeah, relatively speaking, definitely. Yeah. So for this next one, we have a bottle that I think gives a window into the idea of what this fragrance is all about. This is Zerzhov Naxos. Fragrance is defined by its honey and tobacco combination, and then also vanilla, lavender, and tonka. Uh, for me, mostly what you're getting is this sweet honey and vanilla mixed with this tobacco. Tobacco becomes more apparent as it dries down, but uh, the opening is actually sweet. Mm -hmm. And that was the one thing when you, when I first hear people talking about Naxos and you know I wanted to try it, uh, I just had my own idea about what it would be, but it did kind of surprise me when you first are able to spray it. It's this sweet, and when you think of Naxos, it's almost like, oh, I don't know if it's really that gonna be that sweet, but it, it actually is. Not to a point where it's very, like, like it's almost sickeningly uh, sweet, but it's not that. Uh, it has an oriental spicy kind of nature to it as well. Um, the lavender definitely helps as well with that combination with the honey tobacco, uh, as well as the vanilla. I love this one, and I think the honey gives it a very natural sweetness in comparison to like an artificially sweet. Mm -hmm. um, a honey sweetness is very different than like a vanilla sweetness or something like that. And That's this true. does have the vanilla in it and the tonka, but it's not like overly sickeningly sweet. And I think it's because of the honey. It's almost like Winnie the Pooh grown up, you know? like That's one way to put Zerzhov Naxos. Also, I would say too, is like when you see like fruity and like all these sweet notes, typically they're really sharp at mm -hmm. times and like almost piercing uh, to your nose. This is more rounded off. I think it's- It's uh, very smooth. It, it is smooth, but it's still intense at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best way to look at this kind of sweetness when it opens up. Next up, we have one of Teddy's faves, and that is the Roja Creation E, and that is from the Parfum Cologne Collection. So notes for this one, we have cognac, vanilla, tobacco, benzoin, heliotrope, ginger, ambergris, and bergamot. Right off the top, I get the cognac for sure. It's very kind of syrupy, resinous. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me of Dr. Pepper, kind of cola vibes, very fizzy. Mm -hmm. um, you can take it away because I know you love that one. 
I adore this fragrance. Yeah, I know you do. I, I know you're not as big on this one. I think this is a fantastic fragrance. I still like it though. I don't want it to seem like I don't like it. I do, mm -hmm. um, just not my fave. This, uh, and Parfum Cologne, uh, the reason why they classified is that is what uh, Raja Dove wanted was he wanted to have this opening that was bright, uh, like a cologne, and then also have some of that staying power as a, a parfum. So trying to combine those two elements. So oil concentration, similar to like an eau de parfum, the cognac off the top, that's going to, I think, definitely allow this one to have this boozy tone to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you have like this resinous nature to it with some of the, uh, like the benzoin, uh, the ginger also gives it this uh, type of fizzy nature with the cognac and some of the other elements to allow it to almost have this effervescent nature to it. One of my favorite fragrances from the house and just smells very opulent. Next on our list here, we have Aqua de Parma Colonia Club. And this is a fragrance we've mentioned several times on this channel. I like this fragrance a lot, and I know many people when they think of the Colonial line, they look in other places. This is almost the oddball out in many ways. People are quick to maybe write this one off, maybe quicker than they should. I love this one. Why I like this is it combines some fougere elements with some sporty, wearable elements for the 21st century. So you have mint, lavender, bergamot, and rolly, geranium, lemon, orange, and vetiver. When you spray this one on, you do certainly get this refreshing upkick with the mint and then uh, bergamot, the citrus, also getting that lavender in there. That's where I think some of the fougere elements start to come into play. Uh, it does deviate though pretty strongly from some of the other colonial line, which I like. More youthful, but still sophisticated. If you think of Aqua de Parma, you think of classic Italian perfumery, and this is exactly that, but maybe a little bit more reformulated to fit a younger demographic. You know, the name Colonia Club, it reminds me of a country club. I used to be a server at a country club, and it just kind of reminds me of the men that would come in there. So definitely a gentleman. Last one, Courtney, here we go. Last on the list today, we have Amouage Reflection Man, one that I absolutely adore. I love when you wear this one. Notes for this fragrance include jasmine, neroli, sandalwood, orris, rosemary, vetiver, and cedar. So I actually have a full review of this fragrance on the channel, and we can link to it down below to check it out if you are interested. This is a powdery wave of a fragrance, and then it has this very strong midsection, stronger than most, where you get a bunch of these florals that come in. You have the jasmine, neroli, uh, and orris, uh, also allowing this kind of this powdery nature to come to the forefront. And then it dries down, you get this uh, cedar backbone of the vetiver, and it starts to turn more into this woody base, as you might suspect with a fragrance of this genre. Good for these spring, summer months, but also good solid performance. It doesn't uh, project out like throughout the entire longevity of the fragrance. It gets a little closer to the skin as you're getting into maybe like hour three or four. If you are somebody that might be a bit hesitant to try like a white floral or different floral fragrances, this might not be for you, but if you wanna give it a shot and wanna smell a fragrance that does it well, Reflection Man is absolutely that. Definitely in alignment with this idea of class that we've put out in front of us for this video. But all right guys, that's all we have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. Also, is there a fragrance in your collection that you would kind of classify in the same way? What's that most like mature, sophisticated fragrance that you own that you'll grab maybe when you wanna you know, feel more mature as you're walking out the door every day? Let us see comments down below. I think that'll be helpful for other people. But all right guys, well thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and we'll see you all very soon.